For more on Merkel's visit to China, Jack Prakowski joins us from Beijing. Jack is a managing partner at JFP Holdings. Jack, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Jack, China's Premier Li Keqing telling Chancellor Merkel on Monday that he does not want trade tensions with the EU to escalate into a trade war. Now, China wants WTO market economy status. Merkel has already said that she favors that in principle. So in your opinion, what has been the most significant achievement from Merkel's visit to Beijing so far? Well, I think just showing the friendship between Germany and China is an important step. Uh, you know, Chinese leaders and Chinese people are, are, are very uh, impressed by, uh, by expressions of support, desire for cooperation, and so forth. And so amidst all of these uh, other tensions that China has with the European Union, just the very fact that she is here promoting cooperation between the two countries is a very, very important sign and kind of a, uh, an indication that Germany wants to continue its cooperation with China and keep an open dialogue. Well, Jack, the issue of steel exports has been especially hot and tricky. China has been accused of dumping cheap steel exports, especially as demand domestically has slowed down. Where do things stand there? Well, China has, uh, you know, a lot of overcapacity in steel. Uh, you know, China's got an estimated, you know, uh, you know billion uh, tons of steel capacity, probably somewhere between 100 to 200 million of excess capacity. So this is going to be a, a, an issue that's going to be there for some time as, as China's steel industry kind of needs to consolidate and, and kind of right itself after a tremendous expansion. This is not just an issue with the EU. This is also um, an issue with other trading partners around the world, including the United States. Well, the banking sector has been a point of contention. Uh, German banks are restricted by 20% limit on the size of stakes that they can buy in Chinese banks. And Merkel stressed a need for reciprocity. Now, Premier Li is maintaining that Chinese banks are disadvantaged in Europe uh, compared to the European and American counterparts with so-called informal barriers. How is this scenario likely to progress? Well, the, uh, you know, not just banking, but insurance, the whole financial sector is one of those sectors in China that uh, has remained, uh, you know, very restricted in from a regulatory point of view. And I think that uh, China kind of views, you know, getting its banking sector right and having strong Chinese banks is essential to some of its broader aims. For example, you know, making the, uh, the RMB fully convertible at some point here in the, in the, uh, in the near future. So I think you can expect China to continue to, to drag its feet on, in terms of opening up its banking sector, its financial sector, not just to, to, you know, to European German companies, but also to, uh, to banks and financial institutions around the world. Because China views the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the security and the soundness of its banking system as one of the key objectives that it needs to accomplish. So if China does continue to do that, what does it mean regarding its chances of getting market economy status with the World Trade Organization? Premier Li saying China has already fulfilled its obligations. What is your take? Well, there's always a difference of opinion as to, as to what, you know, whether China has met certain conditions and so forth. I think the history has always been that in, some, in, in many areas, for example, talking about the manufacturing sector generally, I mean, that's been generally open to uh, to com overseas companies from you know from all over the world including including Germany however there have always been certain sectors that have been uh, you know closed to uh, or, or not closed but restricted as far as involvement by you know by overseas companies I think you can expect to you know to see that uh, continue however the good news is that China is, is, is gradually moving towards a situation where it is opening up its capital markets, it is opening up its financial sector. So while certainly the pace of that opening up is not what a lot of people would like to see, uh, I think the direction is, uh, you know, is correct. All right. Still 96 deals are valued around 15 billion were side, signed on the sidelines of this. We're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much, Jack Perkowski, managing partner at JFP Holdings.